you have a set of data and what you'd like to do is partition those data into a discrete number of groups. How are you going to do that? Well, one way of doing it is by using k-means clustering. And in this video, I'm going to explain that algorithm. Here I have three clusters and I can mark the center of those clusters here. And then if I want to assign data to each of those three clusters, I just ask for each data point, which of the centers are you closest to? So if you're closest to the blue X, we mark the data point in blue. And we end up partitioning the data into three clusters. So that's very easy, right? But I've assumed I know where the centers are and we don't. That of course is the fundamental problem we're trying to solve with this algorithm. So if I don't know where these centers are, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm just gonna make a guess. Uh, well, a guess is, it's not even a guess. I'm just going to randomly assign these locations. So I've done a random assignment here. And now what I can do is pose the question uh, for each data point, which X are you closest to? And I'm gonna mark the data point with the appropriate color. Now, to help me do this, I'm, I'm not going to use the algorithm. I'm going to just do it by eye. Um, to help me do this, I'm going to use some geometry here. And those are the color assignments that I've decided. Now, the next step is to ask the question, what is the center of these clusters that we've identified? So what do I mean by that? Well, this green X, for example, is not representative of these green points. The, point, the, the center is about here. And similarly, this purple X, the center is probably over here and this blue X should come down. So we want to relocate the centers based on the assignments that we have made. Once we've moved the X's, we've moved the centers of the clusters, the data are no longer assigned correctly. So for example, these purple points here um, are closest to the green, so these should be green. So effectively, by this X moving down, it's going to make a land grab and it's going to sort of make more of these green. So let's take that step, like so. And now because of that, this X uh, is no longer in the center, it needs to move down. And similarly, this X has to uh, move across. So each time we reassign the data and then we recalculate the center of gravity, the center of mass, these X's. And we keep on performing this procedure until we converge, until there's no change in the outcome. And there we are. So we end up partitioning the data. Now, the actual outcome might depend on where the initial start points were. So typically, the algorithms will try multiple start points and give you the results of the best uh, outcome. If I come to jump software, then you can see I've got some data here. So X1 and X2 uh, mapping out these three clusters that you saw in the demonstration. But this time I'm just going to run the algorithm. So I'm going to come to clustering and say I want to do a k-means cluster. And I'm clustering these two columns. And the key feature here is I have to specify k, the number of clusters. So I'm going to say three. And then it identifies three clusters and it, you can see the count here, how many data points are in each cluster. It's convenient to just save these clusters to the data table. So now I can see that these rows, for example, are part of cluster one. And you can see that I have three clusters, one, two, and three. It's also, I think, uh, helpful just to color uh, the, the clusters. And so uh, within the platform, you can just come along and you can say that you want to save the colors to the data table. And you can see those colors are now marking out those three colors, those three partitions, those three clusters that we can naturally see within those data. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please let me know by giving it a like. Now, there's one thing I didn't discuss in this video, and that is the value for K. In the example I gave you, we, it was a two-dimensional problem and you can see there were three clusters. In general, we might have 10, 20 dimensions and you can't draw a picture like this and that's why we rely on clustering. And the question that always comes up when you teach cluster analysis, how many clusters? How do you choose K? What is the optimal number of clusters? Well, that's something I'm going to discuss in my next video. All the best and bye for now.